Sunshine Valley Farm family, welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells on not to miss out on any episodes of The Farm. And of course, if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. Asante Sana, thank you for really following our journey at Value Farm and also being part of this family. It makes us really so proud of you. But anyways, we are here at the farm. It is morning. Yes, the sun is coming out. It has been gloomy earlier on, but it's, the sun at least is coming out right now. I'm so happy about it. And of course, today is another day that we are sharing with you guys our journey, what we are doing at Value Farm, what is actually happening, you know, because it's morning hours. There are so many activities that are really happening, so many chores that we are doing at the farm. And as you know, Value Farm, it is a commercial mixed farm and we do have so many livestock we have the goats we have the sheep we have the pigs then we also have poultry we also have um, rabbits as well yes so it's a commercial farm and we are here to share all our journey in different aspects of farming that we have at the farm and today is just kind of a special day for us because you know, for those who have been really following our journey for a long period of time, you know that we planted some maize. Yes, and this maize is the one that we are using to feed our our animals at the farm. And why we planted it, it's because we wanted to cut the costs, to cut the feeding costs at the farm. And why not really plant? Of course, previous seasons we, did, we planted our maize before, but we had challenges, we had mistakes that we really made previously. But this time around, we really wanted to do it in a much better way and at least the results are not disappointing and today is the day guys i shared with you guys our progress when we were planting when we were weeding when we were spraying now it is time for us to harvest the maize you might be wondering how many acreages that we really planted we planted a good number of acres of, of the maize. That's why we really wanted to do this in a much smarter way because the previous season, for those who have watched our videos, we had a few hiccups here and there because of um, little supervision. So this time around, we have our team, especially from the farm, that are part of the people that we hired to always help us do the harvesting. So we started with sections we have to monitor section per section that's what we are actually doing so i wanted to take you guys so that you can see what we are doing today then we can proceed and do other things as well so guys come along with me so that we harvest some of the maize as you can see here by the way the maize has already dried yeah so this is ready drying on the cob and we are going to be harvesting it let me show you guys that's how it looks like. Let me remove the, the hacks. So my team is already there ahead of me because um, what really happened as well, we had rains, you know, January. January, we didn't expect rain to be too much. So the stems really fell down as you can see here. Like this one really fell down. So we are trying to catch up with the ones that really fell down so that they don't rot because if you leave them down for a long period of time they will start rotting so the ones that are that are that fell are the ones that we are harvesting at the moment but for these ones that are still standing we shall come back later so that we can be able to harvest it so this is what we are doing we are going to have um, we have a machine that also helps us to decob to remove the seeds so that is also coming up guys if we have the opportunity i'll share with you guys when we are getting this maze but so far so good as you can see not really bad and this is not the best section that really grew so you can imagine where the maze is let's go to my colleagues so that we can share with you guys so that i can demonstrate for you what we are actually doing right now guys let's go Well guys, we are right here with my colleagues. I think you can see everyone has their own sack. Like my colleague right here. You know, some of them are being so shy <laughs> with the camera. 
but everyone has their own sack and we are going section by section especially for these ones that have really fallen down so we have to make sure at least we sort this out as you can see you can even see that termites were even starting to to eat them up which is not really so good so we have a whole team that is helping us here and we have um, other contracted people that we are going to definitely bring so they can also help us because the more we leave them on the ground they are going to just um, rot so you can even see we have more more maize here it was even starting to to rot with the termites just within a short period of time so you can imagine if you delay the more you delay the more wastage you get at the farm so this is what is happening we remove the cobs we leave them here i mean the outer covers you can see You see, this is proper maize and it's really very go grown. We have here... Yeah, it's quite tedious as well. But this is what we have to go through. It was really unexpected for us to have the maize falling. The way it's falling like this. We have some right here, so you can imagine. And remember there is more that is still on the stems like this one that is still standing. So this one has to be harvested before it also starts falling down. Because we don't know when the, the rains are really going to stop. The rainy seasons have really changed. Seasons are different nowadays. So this is a lot of hard work. At the farm. But we are not complaining. We are sure we shall definitely at least have a good harvest this season round and we shall have enough feeds for the animals as well. So that's what's actually happening. As you can see, this is going to go on till later. And the beauty is our stuff that you're seeing right here are part of the farm, part of the people who take the animals out in the field to, to graze. They're already finished with their morning duties, especially like the cleaning. Yeah, they finished the cleaning of the goat houses, the pig houses. So they are helping out with the harvesting before they go outside, before they go again to graze. So that's what's actually happening. I'm so proud with the teamwork that we have at the farm because, you know, without teamwork, nothing can be done. So that's what we are trying to accomplish. Of course, some other people are still working because not everyone has to come to the garden. So there are some that we left behind to take care of other things, take care of the animals as well. Like my colleagues have gone to fetch water for the goats on the upper section of the farm. The ones at the lower section of the farm, we have already finished cutting the shrub for them. They're already feeding and there's someone taking care of them there. And of course, this other team right here are also helping out. So guys, let's get this started. You can even see this one. We have so many anthills here, so if you're not careful, your maize can go to waste. That's why we have to really get a bigger team, but with strict supervision, guys. That is what's happening. And you remember, guys, these were the same people that we planted with this maize. Here, I'll show you guys that the, the clip. And guys, let me just tell you guys something. With this maize, this is going to serve so many purposes because it's going to help us with feeding the goats, feeding the pigs, feeding the staff as well. So it's going to be really very, very helpful because with the staff, we're going to make enough posho. With the goats, we're going to make enough maize bran. With, um, with, um, still with this, we shall be able to make also broken for the chickens and also for the pigs and also for the goats so it's going to be very helpful we are going to cut the costs and for every farmer out there if you do not really 
do an initiative of planting your own feeds it's going to be very more costly for you because it's it's with the feed prices right now they keep going up every now and again and it's really very difficult for you to have animals and you're also spending a lot on buying feeds it is too too expensive so if you really try to really plant your own maize it is going to help you if you plant your own soya it's going to be very helpful then also if you have your own machinery like other farm that you can even mill your own maize mill your own broken it's even the, it's even better you know so that is what we're already planning so this by the way after collecting like this we are going to dry it because it's not fully dry by the way still wet so we are going to take it we have a tarpaulin in our part of the farm that we are going to take we are going to leave it to dry for some time before they start to to remove the the, the maize from the cob yes we have a small machine that we always use to remove the maize from the cob how are yogurts yeah. or the sheep yeah. the sheep or goats Dopa. Dopa. Yeah. That is what you're taking care of. Mm. So how are they? They are good. Hey, these ones even have termites in them. Ha, ah, chaka mulia kasol, amini. Fene. Fene. Huh? Mwari mwari ndeko? Bim? Toka di de what? Fene, madam. Toka ya fene? You breakfast. You breakfast. So guys, we are now time check. Because our staff have to really go and take the goats. It is already 10.30, so they have to go. It's time up for them. At least they've been in the field for, for two hours. So they have to go. That's why you're seeing us really moving up. Then we also have another team that is going to come. Of course, the ones that we contracted from outside the farm to come and help us. Then a different section. Hey, what has happened? Someone is falling with maize. <laughs> He's already tired before even he starts the job. <laughs> Huh? Sebo, what is happening? Hmm? Someone is already falling before even before <laughs> taking the animals to the field. Huh? Can you imagine? But everyone has their own sack. At least that shows how much everyone has worked. And these are like the second sacks they're getting. Bambi mueva, eh? At least that is the first part that we have done today. Of course, they work for only like two hours, then they're now going to take their goats to the field because at least the sun is out and it's time for them to at least rest a little bit before taking the goats outside. So those are some of the activities for today. Now let's go and check on the goats that we have on this other upper section. I don't know whether we can have a chance to see the ones that are, that are down there. But let's first check the ones that are up here so that we can see how they are how everything is this morning and of course i'll be sharing with you guys you know random things random activities that we are currently doing at the farm but at least i'm so proud with the team so far because of what they have done they show that they are really they love what they do and of course they are they also appreciate our efforts of how we treat them how we make them comfortable at the farm that's why you see that the energy is there for them to come and help us with the field work before they go to take the animals to the to graze outside yeah so let's go guys so that i can show you what is happening on the other side of the farm we go 
Well guys, I wanted also to show you guys something right here. We do have also some coffee plantation right here. Who are lovers of coffee? Yes, we have some coffee at the farm as well. So for those who will be coming to the farm for trainings when you officially open, the coffee is right here, yes. So with this coffee, we actually did not plant it because we have several of them around the land. We didn't really actually plant this coffee, but we found it with, when we bought the land. The person who used to own this land used to have coffee plantation. I think that was their main source of income because there's really a lot of coffee on this land when we bought it. So this is the amount of it. We've also, by the way, harvested like I think twice. Yes, we've harvested or so far twice and we've really got some, some good coffee from this plantation. If you go further that side, there's a lot of coffee plants, yes, ahead, which is really good. It's not our main uh, focus for now, but you know, this is the beauty of coming to a remote place and you can acquire land which has already been used and you can also find something that you can benefit from. So this coffee here is beneficial to us as well which is a good thing, it's a good sign. We have different plants and we're not planning to really cut them off the land because you know what, it is also good for the land as well. Since we really plant here, we plant our maize, we plant our soya, so it is okay, yeah, to have all that. And also, it's not only the coffee that we found on the land, we have different types of trees that we have here already, like the jackfruits, we have mangroves, we have the moringa trees, on this particular section of the farm. So that is part of farming. At least we appreciate that the person did not cut off when we had just bought this land. Yes, that is what is happening. So I just wanted to share with you guys, but my best fruit from the farm is jackfruit and mangoes. I love jackfruit and mangoes here at the farm. Then also oranges. Of course, the oranges that we found on the land are this, um, the traditional ones they're not this they're not they're quite bitter yes and the lemons they're really really very strong yes that's what we have at the farm so guys that was just a by the way so let's continue let's go and we see what is actually happening on this other side i can see the goats are already out the ones that are on the upper section of the farm we're already giving them the feeds but let me take you guys along with us and you see what is actually happening here As you've really seen, these goats really love this, this banana leaves right here. So every morning we also make sure that we bring for them. I don't know why they really love them because these are the pure South African goats as you can see. But they really, really love it. You can see they're really struggling to get all the leaves off, off the banana leaf as you can see. They're even waiting for more, they're yearning for more. Then when you look at these others as well, this way here. These ones are also struggling to finish up, so they really love the banana leaves a lot. And of course with the shrub, we do bring for them the shrub already, but this is already done. Within one minute, it's already done, as you can see. So it's at least good that we also have enough bananas at the farm. So we cut some of the banana leaves that are not really growing, that are not okay, and we give to the goats as you can see right here yes and remember we also leave them to at least wither a little bit before we give to the goats to eat yeah but this is their best part of it my friends are also back from fetching water so i'm gonna take you guys get some water for the goats as you can see the goats are already yearning for the water <laughs> if you look at them from the background they are looking at us getting this water Yeah, so where do I start from? Nocturne Kani, here. What are you 
quarter and your break. <laughs> so you have to power the all yearning, oh my god. Yes, your water is right here, guys. And this is clean water, as you can see, guys. Very clean. Yeah, your water is right here. And by the way, guys, we already cleaned our drinkers here. So that's why we are just pouring direct. Because among the chores that we do in the morning, we do clean the drinkers, the troughs, and all that. So let's take to the other trough. Water is here. This is also part of exercise. Then you start again. You are really very thirsty. You come and pour. It's even choking. Hey, don't bring your head here, madam. Then uh, we have to take water for the males. Remember the males are separated from the females. These are only the females section. So the males are that side. Let's take for them. Come on, open. These ones are also very thirsty, guys. So. Now these ones right here are waiting for the water. There's water already here, but it's not clean. So let me pour it. There you can. So we have to get more water. The water source, by the way, is not that far. So we have to get more water for them. But remember, these goats are also going to go to the field. So this is like just the morning bit of it that we also give them. So as you can see, if you guys, if you guys really remember, the last time we were here, this wasn't cleared. I told you guys that we were going to clear it. Our team has already cleared this space at least, which is really amazing. We also gave the males their the banana leaves as you can see they really love the banana leaves a lot and of course we also have the the super nap here and the brocari already put for them this dopper right here guys this is a champ it's one of the it's one of the rams that we have here in our breeding program but i'm really so proud of it this one here never even like you know when goats are brought to the country they add just some of them you know do not like the environment right here, but this ram here has been a champ. I'm really so, so proud of it here. It's a good one, um, which I'm really so, so proud of here. So good, as you can see, very healthy, looking nice and the best. And this is by the way stud. For you to know that it's a stud, it has a metal clip on it. So this is a real champion ram at Value Farm. So if you're going to buy the dopers from us, you're going to buy sheep from us, just know the man here was from South Africa and it's a stud ram. Then we have our gentlemen right here. These are also the men of the farm, the ones who are in our breeding program. They're just relaxing, you know, because they've already fed. Remember, they first had their, their grains already. Then um, we brought for them this other shrub. Then the leaves, the banana leaves, they are happy. So they are relaxing here, not so hungry. Then we shall also take them outside to graze more. Yes, we have that guy right there. That is the meat master. This is the most stubborn sheep we have. <laughs> this meat master is the strongest, very stubborn and, you know, the biggest here, I should really say. You can see how he is. He's always on standby, ready to fight. 
but it's a good one. So we have the meat master, we have the ram, we have the Kalahari red, guys. I don't know whether you saw this Kalahari red. This is another one. This Kalahari red right here, when they say Kalaharis can survive in any, in any place, this one is an example as well. This one right here is one of the goats that have really not given us any issues at all. Yes, and it's a very young one, by the way. So I'm really so proud of it. As you can see, the champ walking, huh? enjoying. Then we have our championship right here, the boa. This one right here is a champ. <laughs> I'm so proud of it. So friendly, very nice, very calm as well. So this is a pure boa as well. A stud championship boa with a certificate from South Africa. <laughs> yes, but it's a good one as well. Then we also have the savannas right here. This is, these ones are quite stubborn as well, but they're very, very good. Yes. So I just wanted to share with you guys. They're taking their water, as you can see. Water already given, feeds already given. Now it's time for them to relax a bit and we take them outside. That is what's happening here at this point. Yeah? Hey, this smell escaped. Okay. Yeah, so we already separate. This one had escaped outside. Yes, guys, so that is it really. Yeah, so this one is closed. We have to close because these males do not have to come this other side of the farm. So that is it. Basically, guys, there's a, a kid that I want to show you guys. One of the pure boas that were born here. I'm really so surprised how it looks like. It's so adorable. So, so adorable, guys. Let me show you. Let me show you. Guys, look at this champ right here. The last time I carried him when he was just a little baby, I think it was just like um, a little kid. He was like um, a few days old, but look at him. At one month, I can't even carry him. I was scared even to carry him. But this is a pure, one of the pures that we have. This is genetics. That's why we always emphasize with you that in case you're going to buy your goats, focus on good genetics even if you get a few of them at least start with that so that you do not regret when you're farming imagine this one here which is just a month old imagine when it's now like five months how it will look like so this is one of the champs guys let me put him down so that you guys see hey you see him i think i don't know whether the camera is giving justice oh sorry 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 i don't know whether the camera is giving justice but that's how it looks like these ones are finished the leaves, the banana leaves, within one minute. You see them? Done, 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 done. They love it so much. Yeah, guys, that is it for this other section right here. Let's first see the house as well. Yeah, guys, we are here. At least the house looks clean. Yeah, they did more of the sweeping. This is an empty room. We are going to, one person is going to come and sweep here again because uh, before they went outside, they were here. So we are going to do the thorough round of sweeping. Yes, then we have um, some of these goats right here that are not really feeling well. So they are under treatment and most of them had foot rot. Someone had requested for a video about uh, how you treat foot rot and how you can manage the situation. I have a video that is going to be put up. I don't know whether by the time you watch this video, you've already watched it, but we have that episode as well when we are treating and also managing the hooves of the goats, especially during rainy seasons. And um, they have maybe foot rot, they have overgrown hooves as well. So. That's what is happening. So these ones here are remaining here, but we're already feeding them. We already have the grass. They've already eaten the grain first. Then we also have the grass that is going to be given to them. 
but these ones are remaining here. They can't go to the field, they can't go grazing as well because they can't really walk long distances. Yes, guys. So if you really have other questions, please leave them down below because we promise to you that for these episodes, we are going to be showing you guys what is actually happening at the farm. We are going to do the chores together with you guys. We are going to answer all your questions that you leave in the comments. So don't get scared to leave your questions down below because we want to really answer all those questions because this year, no stone will be left unturned. That's the motto, yes. And of course, for small beginners, for the beginner farmers, these episodes are going to be focused on you because we realize we have so many people who, are, who want to start such projects at their farm, at their hometowns, wherever they are. And we promise to always deliver for you, bring for you content that is going to inspire you, that is going to teach you and also motivate you to do such projects wherever you are. But I really appreciate you guys so much. If you've watched this, this video up to this point, please give us a thumbs up like and share then also if you haven't checked our social media platform i don't know what you're really waiting for go to instagram that is value farm ug facebook is value farm tiktok is also value farm go see behind the scenes go see what we are doing things that you'd never see on youtube i really appreciate you all till next time bye